Welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and this is the second part of the Fujimi Garage and Tools diorama set in 124th scale. This part will be focusing on many of the tools and other objects. Firstly here I'm making the table, it's the second table. The four legs fit into the top, I used some extra thin Tamiya cement and then left that for a little while before putting the uh, kind of flat part on the top. After it was all glued together, I painted it in some satin white. I then painted the vise in gloss blue and aluminium and super glued that onto one end of the table. Later added some Tamiya black panel line accent just to add some sort of shading to parts of this. And then you can put all kinds of props and things like that on there and glue them or not, it's up to you. Next I went on to the smaller tool chest. I'd already done the larger one in the previous video. This fits nicely together and the Tamiya extra thin cement again is really helpful. Once it was all secure and uh, glued in place, I then painted that in the same enamel gloss red as I had done the larger tool chest. You can choose either to have the lid closed or open on this one. Once that had cured, I used a little bit of Revell silver acrylic on the end of a cocktail stick just to do the kind of edges of the drawers. Really pleased with this effect. And then the tools themselves are painted silver with a little bit of blue on the handles of the screwdrivers and popped them into place in the top. Then to add a little bit extra I found some spare decals uh, with the kind of brands and things like that and put them on the inside of the lid. Quite like that. Also had some spanners and other tools which I went back to the other tool chest and glued those in place there as well. Really happy with how these have turned out. The smaller oil canisters have got some decals either for Mobile One or Valvoline. Then there was the gas welding tanks. These uh, kind of dials and switches on the top need to be done in aluminium. I chose to do the rest in a kind of metallic blue. Then there are two types of pipes. This one here is the hollow one which slots easily onto the ends of those. So added some panel line accent, add some shading, and there's a couple of dials which go on the top before adding the welder itself onto the end of the pipes. Now the window here is all clear. I added some gloss white to the outsides and also to the window frame. Good thing about using acrylic here, this is Revell acrylic, is that it scratches off really easily with a cocktail stick if you make mistakes, as I'm showing here. Think of this a bit like uh, kind of painting a canopy. Then went on to do the power lift. Chose to do this yellow with blue uprights. Now the switch system in the middle, uh, you don't want to glue that, uh, but you do want to glue the pad that goes beneath it. It's quite sensitive and I haven't been able to get it to move that well. The arm on one side is one piece and the other one is made up of three pieces and can therefore be articulated. Make sure to read the instructions carefully about where the glue goes to fit it into the right place. Once this is done, it can then be placed onto the upright. The upright's made out of two pieces, which have both been done in gloss blue enamel. And once that's secure, I used some super glue to fit it to the base. These kind of yellow arm parts are the same on both sides. And then there's a lid on top, and then there's this sort of motor here. You need to lower the arms before putting this into place if you want to, as it will stop the arms from reaching the top. Then a few decals to go on the sides. Once 
once I was happy with this all, I checked the height and position and then tested it on this Ravel Golf. Now then there's also this electric welder. The instructions recommend doing this in a kind of grey or silver and also painting these buttons and switches. However, there are then green decals that go over the top of the central and top section. A lot of decal solution was needed to help it fit over the switches. Now the pipe here needs to be fed through these holes at the bottom. What I did was I um, kind of found it halfway and then used tweezers to help me push it back through so that both ends of the welders are attached to each other on the inside. I decided I wasn't happy with how it looked in white, so I took it back apart and then painted it a similar green to the decals on the front. I think the instructions were clearly wrong for this particular part. It's a pretty good match. Now this is an engine stand. It's all done in the same red enamel gloss as the tool chests. This goes together quite nicely. Just remember to make sure that the wheels underneath are cured before putting it down onto the ground. There's also this engine lift, also done in the same red. These wheels are molded in place, so I did them in uh, matte black. It's a bit fiddly. I believe that you can get it to move if you are careful about where the paint and glue goes. However, I wasn't too worried about doing that. I don't actually have any engines to lift with this, but um, maybe I'll leave one out of a kit in the future to include in this display. However, the fitment's all very nice. Remember to use a bit of super glue in places to help it be as strong as possible. Tweezers are very useful for these fine little parts. Also used a little matte black for the handle on this here. And these two parts are now finished. Now then I used my custom decal techniques to print off some posters which I found on the internet. Damon Hill was one of my favourite drivers growing up so I found this one of him in the 1998 Jordan you like how that looks on there. These posters were printed onto white inkjet decal paper and then once they're dried they were given four coats of Halford's acrylic automotive lacquer. Now then there's this little intercom, painted this in matte grey and then used some different colours for the buttons. Used a little bit of panel line accent to make the vent like a speaker look a little more realistic. Now then, one of the most fiddly parts of this is the kind of jack. This had also been painted in the same red uh, enamel gloss. Thin cement was very useful here. I believe you can make this in such a way that it will move. However, I wasn't particularly worried about doing that, just wanted it to look realistic. Now these side plates, there is a right way and a wrong way to go up depending on where the wheels need to go. Make sure that there's more space at the back of them to fit these wheels. I put them on the wrong way round initially and then had to change them around later. There's a couple of little number plates that feature in the kit, so I used some spare plates from some Revell kits, little US plates here to go on the wall. I thought those were quite a nice little feature. Now I wanted to put a clock on the wall. I found this old Casio one that I had, um, but I decided that it would just look like a watch. So I found this tip video on uh, YouTube, which I will link in the description, to making them out of buttons. I measured it and then printed off some clock faces. This is just on paper, as I didn't want the decals to sink into the holes in the middle of the button. Once I cut it out as carefully as I could, it was just glued on with a little bit of Pritt stick glue stick. 
And then once that had dried, and I'd made sure that the position was exactly right, I used some Revell Contact Clear to kind of give it a kind of sheen over the top. This glue is safe to use with paper and should dry clear. Once I'd done that, I then gave it some Halfords Clear Lacquer. And there we have it. Pretty happy with how it's all gone together so far. Obviously, you could just leave it at this. I've built almost every piece of furniture that needs to go in here. I just want to add a few more custom features and also show you how you can add the clear perspex sides as well. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll leave you with some pictures of the garage with the Tamiya Skyline R34. Please leave a comment down below. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you soon.